Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hyperconscious Podcast. Alan, what is Hyperconscious? Once you understand why something is the way that it is, now you have the power to change it. Great conversations with great people and great questions are the keys to the kingdom of unlocking your consciousness. Every single action that you do starts as a thought. When you control the way you think, you will control the way you act, and you will control the way you live. That is hyperconscious. Ladies and gentlemen, the Hyperconscious Podcast is proudly sponsored by our friend and mentor, David Meltzer, of the Playbook Podcast. He was kind enough to join us on episode 144 and 135. Folks, it has become Kevin and I's mission in life to help you realize that the life of your dreams is right on the other side of you becoming the greatest version of yourself. Let us help you do that. I rarely do these things twice in such a short amount of time, but you guys impress me. I, I believe in people that provide value and of our service. You two guys are on your way to huge fulfillment, purpose, and profitability, and I look forward to helping you both. We appreciate that more than you know. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of the Hyperconscious Podcast. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode of Five Minute Clinic, where we talked all about saying no. Today, for episode number 228, we are going to do a small talks episode on finding your thing, aka career. So the small talks word itself is going to be career, but the episode is going to be on really finding your thing, and they're, they're obviously very congruent. But first... I want you to go to the hyperconsciouspodcast.com, click on join hashtag hyperconsciousnation. We have a new hyperconscious team with Tiffany and Amy. We do. And Kevin and myself went live yesterday from the car in LA, yes. Los Angeles. Yes. Um, and basically, if you want to be a part of a community that is all chasing their goals and dreams, that is not okay with what is... It's the most supportive group ever of all time. Kevin and I are going to create a new system as soon as we get home from this trip on how to consistently, basically, uh, one idea Kevin had was to put uh, whiteboard mini yeah. courses in there. We were doing it on the website every week, right. and then we decided that it wasn't sustainable for the website, but we want to post weekly, and Monday we're together anyway, so we figured we might as well add a 15 or 10, 15 minute video on stuff that you guys are going through because that's why we have the questions in the beginning like when you sign up we want information about you to help you and, and help serve our con our content towards you right like that's the goal the, the goal is always know, to help you yes and if you're watching this on youtube you can see that we're in a hotel which means the hyperconscious podcast is traveling oh yeah and if you would like us to travel to you or you know somebody who is looking for two high-paced, high-energy <laughs> speakers who love what they do. We, uh, we want to help you guys. So if you're a business owner, corporation owner, a student, a teacher, anybody looking for somebody to come speak, Alan and myself would love to do that. We are ramping up our speaking careers right now. Absolutely. We got a big speech coming up in November at Mass Maritime, but let's jump into career. Yes. Okay, so there's a few definitions here on dictionary.com. So number one is an occupation. Yeah. It is warm. It's warm in here. Yeah, my pits are already sweating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> number one, an occupation or profession, especially one requiring special training, followed as one's life work. As a matter of fact, I love that. Like, focus on your life's work, not just work. Okay, number two, a person's progress or general course of action through life or through a phase of life as in some profession or undertaking. Again, this is finding your thing. Number three, success in a profession or occupation. Number four, a course, especially a swift one. That's not relevant. Okay, so the most relevant of these three is an occupation or profession, especially one requiring special training, followed as one's life work. I like that, life work. I think, I remember, it's funny, because it's, it, this is taking me back to the old hyper-conscious podcast days, and for those... Listening, I have my eyes closed right now and I'm reflecting on how passionate I used to get on the mic about, I, I hate when people don't like their jobs because you spend so much time there. Scratching the surface, one of the first ones was chase your fucking dreams. Yeah, <laughs> because I, it's almost like we get so confused into, this is what happens and we've talked about this before but we're going to talk about it again. You're 16 years old, 
you have to buy a car, so you have to get a job to buy the car. Right. Cool. The car eventually craps the bed, but then you're in college, and you're doing a side job to pay the bills. Maybe you fix the car, and you run it into the ground until you graduate college. Then you graduate college. You have this quote-unquote new money, even though you're only making $45,000 a year. To you, that's a lot. So you, then you start living beyond your means. The problem is... Plus you're in debt. Right. If you're using your income to determine how lavishly you can live, you're always going to have to make more money. And that's why so many people get locked into jobs. Like, I remember when I got my first high-paying job, I was making $13 an hour. Right. But I was working 60 hours a week, and I bought a $30,000 car. It's interesting that you take 60 hours out of your week, of your waking hours, right. to then live more lavishly in the other ones when it's it's like been proven that money material things don't buy sustained 75K. happiness 75k 75k is the is the point right um where they say that money money buys no happiness long, up right. until 75,000 after then, that it doesn't unless you give it away to right. something you care about or um basically if you eliminate pain so like something that you really hate to do if you pay someone to do that yeah, and then yeah. you get more time to do what you love yeah. than it than it does. But I think so the the point I want to make and the takeaway for you if you're listening is I guess don't accept if you don't like your job don't accept that. Right. Don't just say like well that's the way it is like you have to go to a job you don't like every day. That is not true. It's not true. That is not true. Now maybe for now. Exactly. Right. Will you have to take some sort of chance? Right. And oh, yeah. do you know Oprah? Do what you have to do until you can do what you want to do. Fire That's, I'm all about that. Right. I'm all about that. But are you going to be there forever and miserable, or are you going to take a chance and go through some pain, go through some uncertainty, go through some discomfort, get out of your comfort zone, and try something new? Because you'll never get your dream job if you stay at a job you don't like. How do people find their thing? I think you have to do a lot of different things. Right. And it's weird. It's almost like you can connect the dots. So it, I always loved Joe Rogan. Right. I always loved um, the Hillman Morning Show and Talk Sports Radio. Why? I used to think to myself, imagine working four hours a day in I, front of the microphone talking about something you love. I never connected those dots because podcasting wasn't a thing at that time. Right. So for you... I think it's... And because you didn't have self-belief. I don't mean to interrupt you, but like, imagine even if podcasts didn't exist at the time with Hillman Morning Show, you you still could have thought to yourself, I could be on radio. I could do that, right. But you didn't because you didn't have self-belief. No, I did. Oh, I did. did. It just, you got to, for a lot of people, you go to college for that. Like, you have to go to like broadcasting school. See, that's the limiting belief. You don't have to go to college. No, right. I don't even know if Hillman did, honestly. Right, right, right. Yes, it's true. It's true. So for me in this moment, usually I would say get do a lot of things, do a lot of different things, do a lot of things that excite you. But I would say be hyper conscious mm-hmm. and hyper aware of the things that you like and why you like them and then how you could do more of them. Even if it's not a career off the beginning, right. a lot of people started doing something they loved and they figure out a way to make money. Especially if it's something that you are really naturally good at. So there's a lot of like... But how do you know? If you're good at them? Yeah. Things that have come easy to you, you need to, again, you need to be hyper-conscious. So I'm reading a book recently, was it Atomic, it was Atomic Habits, where he talked about Michael Phelps and then this this other distance runner. I don't remember his name. And Michael Phelps has like a really long torso, even though he's 6'4", and this other distance runner has a short torso and really long legs. And now they can both work their face off. They can work long, hard, and smart for the compound effect over time. If they switched sports, they would never be right. gold Olympic gold medalists. So we all have a natural inclination. I'm also reading another book called Mastery by Robert Greene where he talks about we all have a natural inclination towards something. Like, I always remember thinking when I watched Tony Robbins' TED Talk for the first time, I remember thinking to myself, like, I know that I could be really good at speaking. I've always been the one who did the presentations in college in our project groups and stuff. I was always the one who opened. I was always the, the speaker, the person who talked a lot. And so whatever it is for you that you, here's the interesting thing about this, whatever you're really good at, you've always probably been pretty good at it. So you don't even know that that's right. not common. Right. Yeah. Because people say like, oh, you're a good podcaster. I've never podcast. I didn't podcast before I podcast that right. I never liked giving speeches. I never liked getting up in front of the class. Right. You know, so I, for me, that's the answer. What do we have? A minute and a half, two and a half minutes? Jesus. Wow. Um, but you also did used to do Facebook videos a long time ago. I, I remember you saying you, you don't deserve to be happy unless you earn it. Yeah. So well, I was even coaching back then. I just didn't know it. I was coaching. Training. No, I was coaching people for mindset. You were? Yeah. I just See, didn't. I was just helping. Connect the dots yet. Right. 
So that's the thing. It's like you can't connect the dots until you're ahead. You can, you can only connect them looking back, and that's fine. But there's got to be a way that you can figure out, like, why did I admire the people who talked on the radio? I know. It wasn't just because they only worked four hours a day, because I learned quickly that they don't actually just work four hours a day. There's right. four hours behind the scenes. <laughs> oh, yeah. So why did I admire Joe Rogan and his podcast? Right. Because of the freedom, like... Being your own boss, getting to do your own thing. Get crystal clear on why you admire the people, places, things, and ideas that you do. Right. And then figure out, this is the thing. You have to be willing to not make money at first. I know. Most likely. Or put yourself in a position where you can not make money at right. first. Right. For those of you out there, I had a very large cushion when I quit my job in corporate America. I paid off all my debt from my school loans and I saved over $100,000. And if I didn't do that, I would not have had the freedom to fail. Yeah forward yeah over and over again it's almost like a lot of people are working so they can save money for a house or something else but the problem is then you have to keep working that job why don't you save so you can quit your job and do something else right why don't you save to set up your life for success yeah. doing what you want to do yeah. this feels like an old school episode i know it feels I like good this. What, what do we got on time we got a minute i think we're almost about done here all right 10 second blip for the listeners what would you say about finding your thing hyper consciousness is not just about knowing yourself it's also about knowing what other people need i believe finding your thing is the integration between what the world needs most and what you're best at find that make sure there's a market for it and go after it as if your life depends on it because it does my goodness and on the next episode so we are going to do a scratching the surface after this on the power of purpose right and we so for those of you who don't follow us on social media you should at Alan La- uh, at a Lazarus eighty eight at Never Quit Kid. <laughs> Hell on of a Instagram. pitch there, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, like, you should. I, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't, uh, right? Um, <laughs> but yesterday we were in Dave Meltzer's studio yeah. in his business office. That's crazy. And the power, what got us there? The power of purpose got us there, and that's that. Like we hopped off a flight, a six hour flight, checked into the hotel, and did all that, and then we got like leaving. That was the most surreal thing ever. The only reason is it's not luck. It's, it's, it is grit. It is work ethic. But it's, that's all, for me, it's attached to the power of purpose. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that and why when you do find your thing and you can lock in the power of that purpose, you really can change the world and you can change your life and you can change the people around you's lives as well. So, Can I say one more quick yes, thing? Yes, you can. Super fast. Yes, you can. So I had a moment in the car yesterday when Kevin and I were driving to David Meltzer's Sports One Marketing office. And I thought to myself, like, what if Dave canceled on us right now? Mm. We, dr- we literally flew across the country partially to see Dave in person. We came here early. We paid for a hotel, all that stuff. And I said, it wouldn't matter because Kevin and I would just be like, okay, yeah, right. we'll figure something else out. Right. B- but it's worth it for the opportunity. You have to put yourself in, in a position to win. Um, and I think the power of purpose is everything. So. I have pit stains right now. It's like, it's, yeah. the AC is set to 60 in this room, and it's about 80 <laughs> That's because the AC doesn't work, man. I know, it's not ideal. All right, let's get out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed this. Make sure if this episode uh, struck a nerve with you, number one, listen to the next one, because we're going to talk about the power of purpose and how you can leverage it. And feel free to screenshot mm. and share this on your social media tag, Alan and myself, because again... The more people that become hyper-conscious, the better this world will become, and the more people that will be able to change their lives. Amen. Thank you for listening. Bye. Talk soon.